Listen, it's Tuesday, but I still feel things, Clint. I don't, I'm not sure if you think that the overreaction normally reserved for Saturday, yeah. but I'm going to go ahead and spill that over into today. We're going to continue to overreact to this uh, absolute beatdown of Tennessee. Mm. We may sprinkle in a little Alabama conversation here because... That, I can guarantee you that might that's need coming. to come up. And um, we're going to talk about, I'm actually going to, for our loyal third segment listeners, I'm going to call back to something that Clint has said a long time ago, and I'm actually going to give him some credit. So you need to stick around for that here on the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on? I don't know about you, but I just want to race to the third segment, Daniel. Let's, just, just, let's speed along. Let's, let's get this thing moving. Let's get on over there because I like getting credit for things. Uh, hey, by the way, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, your nah, sportsbook experts. No, we're going to go LinkedIn. It's probably um, LinkedIn who's, who's bringing us the episode today, Clint. That's probably who it would be, right? It's, it's, it's Bet Online. It's Bet Online? <laughs> there it is. Heck, let's just let them both bring us the episode today. Why not? <laughs> Uh, hey, today we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. We're going to talk about Todd Munkin. And we're going to talk about linebacker play as well as rest of the defensive players that will continue. And hear me out. That was, again. Like, eight, that was like eight things. I, I know. <laughs> we're going to talk about it. Hear me out again. <laughs> okay. Um, if you don't understand that in a few years' time, when you mm. look across the NFL oh. and you try to make the best defensive team out of any player in the NFL mm-hmm. and half of them – our bulldogs. Yeah, you've been warned. Okay, that's that, that's, that's a few short years away um, that we're we're dealing with that. We scenario. ain't playing at all. But we start with the man himself, Kirby Smart. Hey, welcome. By the way, if you're new, a bunch of you new to the channel, just a quick overview. Okay, not much you need to know. I'm Daniel. He's Clint. It's right there. We are not gurus or insiders. We Praise are Georgia God. fans. So listen, mm. that's what we do on the pot, okay? We're not always as deep into our feelings as we were on Saturday night. Which, by the way, if you haven't watched the Saturday night video, there's a lot of things happening. If you haven't listened to that audio, um, also if you found us on YouTube, uh, we are available on audio, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those things. Uh, but we're Georgia fans. As long as you don't take us too seriously. We and go. you don't take yourself too seriously. We, be we just should fine. get along just fine. And so uh, let's let's kick it off today, Clint, because I just think some things need to be said about Kirby Smart. He's the best coach in college football. Every single program would trade their current head coach for, for Kirby Smart today. We've said this many times over and over again, and it and it remains true to this very day. There's not a single program that would even flinch before trading their current head coach for Kirby Smart. Not for one nanosecond, but the narrative on Kirby Smart, Clint, I don't know if you just if you could just dial back in the memory banks a short Daniel, five to six years ago. I was just going to say, we were here when when Kirby Smart was hired, and we, oh, yeah. we remember vividly all y'all's statements. And when I say all y'all, Georgia fan, please cop y'all. to it. A lot of y'all. Please cop to it. Okay. Let's just go through some of the narratives on Kirby Smart. Narrative one, Kirby Smart can only recruit. He vote. cannot coach. No, he, he can't can. coach nobody. Mm-mm. He cannot draw up a play. No. He cannot scheme. He does not know how to manage a game. It was under the umbrella of Nick Saban and the That's clout the that he brings. So it's really him just following Nick. Kirby's Nick's just a recruiter. Guru. Yeah. Narrative number two, Kirby Smart only only takes five stars, can't develop any talent, Clint. Can't, no. He can't take a young man and develop him, watch him grow, see him rise through the ranks of the program. It's all five stars all the time. That's the only way that he ever wins anything. Correct. Narrative number three, Kirby Smart cannot win the big games, Clint. He, he, he kind of shrinks in the he, big moments. He just 
it's too much for him. Yeah. He's an assistant. He's a coordinator, really. Look, great, great program, great manager kind of guy. Better yeah. to come underneath someone else that's better than him. Yeah. <clears throat> not uh not a big game coach. No. Point four, oh. he he'll never beat Alabama, Clint. He can't and won't he'll never mm. beat Alabama. Um, because he's just not good enough, and no yeah. Nick Saban, the former assistant, has ever beaten Nick Saban. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Oh, um, I'm aware. So I'm aware who beats Nick Saban. He'll never be. <laughs> hold, hold. Narrative. Y'all, you just you just happen to be here. I'm just happy to be here. It's like it's a Savannah accent. It's like marbles are spilling out of your mouth. Um, number five, narrative number five, Kirby will never win a champion. He'll never bring a championship home because it's been 41 years since Georgia's won a championship. He can't do any of those things. Number narrative number six. We're just, we're just, we got more to go. Kirby's a one hit wonder. This is an Ed Orgeron situation. Mm. He had a team of destiny. He had the defense of the century. All them first round talent. 15 draft picks, five first rounders off the defense. Uh, There's no possible way that this team will even come close, even be able to sniff at last year's team. Kirby is a one hit wonder and is quickly going to fall off and be surpassed by the likes of Billy Napier. And Josh Hula Hoople. Clint, let me ask you. Is there anyone out there mm-hmm. who's still brave enough to say anything except bull cut about Kirby Smart? Is there any narrative left that even a Florida fan would dare to utter about Kirby Smart? I'll, I'll give you. I mean, tune into College Game Day next week. And you are sure to hear all the excuses. The rain in the third quarter. The, <laughs> the home field advantage. Not on a neutral site. Well, it's not, not a come home field playoff. advantage because it's Georgia. It's not LSU. It's not Death Valley at night. Daniel, no, there's no self-respecting person. Um, Aaron, uh, not, not, what, Jordan Rogers got on Twitter and oh, started Lord. flapping his gums God, talking about God, how... Heaven. Finally, Georgia showed up, but that was one time. Look, finally, Georgia showed up. Jordan Rogers, tune in to the third segment because I have something to say to you that also pertains to Clint. It's, come on back, brother. No, back, there's Clint. no one that can say any of those because they have been debunked literally mm-hmm. because he can't beat Alabama. He did beat Alabama. He can't do it again. He is doing it currently. First time. Quick question. Georgia, a storied history or kind of a, a short one hit wonder storied program throughout decades? Daniel? Oh, he go way back. That, way, way back. He go way back. So so if I said the first time in the history of Georgia, a team has started 9-0 and in two consecutive seasons, oh, that would mean something to you, wouldn't it? Yeah. So you're saying that that didn't even happen in like 80-81, like nope. in those teams. Like, the, oh, nope. that's interesting. Um, yeah, when you make the college football playoff, when you win the national championship and then make the college football playoff again the next year, which Georgia is, is a near certainty to do, yes, uh, that's that's called validation. That's called backing it up. Now, listen, I don't know if Georgia is going to win the national championship. They are certainly the favorite to do so right now. But I if don't I know could if find they're... odds right now, the three accounts would be emptied once more. Yeah, well, they they filled up quick, but there you can empty them <laughs> just as quick. Let's talk about um, just a blunt question. This is the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast, and we're nine minutes in. People do love the banter. They love the banter. Is this Nick Saban's last year? Nick Saban must be done after this year. And I'll tell you very succinctly and very quickly, the team is off the rails. The offense is stagnant. There's no player development. There's no more recruiting. The transfer portal has swung and missed, and he's literally – past retirement age it's well yeah i got a lot of heat when i started talking about the man turned 70 years old and i said you know uh he may never he may never win another championship 70 years old but he had the the greatest team college football's ever seen now ever. two years in a row um this I, I just i don't take a lot of pride in a lot of things that i say because i say a lot of dumb stuff Okay, the comments let have let me know that. 
But I tried to get on here and tell y'all mm -hmm. that the man took a left tackle from Vanderbilt and a running back from Georgia Tech. I'm not saying they're not good players. They're fine. Jameer Gibbs is a fine player. He's fine. How's it working out? The because best win on the year is a one-pointer against an a starting quarterback less Texas. And by the way, Texas ain't back and they're not close to. Gibbs would not be fourth on the depth chart at UGA right it, now. And people people jumped Georgia fans jumped all over me when I said uh, there might be I think Alabama has a bit of a problem if these are the people that you're going out and clamoring to take if you haven't recruited a left tackle to the point that you have to go take Vanderbilts like that's not winning y'all that's losing if you I don't care how good the kid is it's losing and Georgia doesn't have that problem and won't have that problem under Kirby Smart for uh, quite some time. So 21 it's, five stars watched him dismantle this darling of just, college football. Just going to keep on. Listen, Nick Saban, the greatest college football coach of all time. Un undoubtedly. Correct. This team, I think, may have broken him because – he hates this team, and you can see it in his face. He, he hates them. He want, He is in his head. He has to be restrained from choking players on the sideline. He, he hates their guts. He hates their attitude. He hates their, their laziness. He hates their entitlement. And listen, it, he probably hates how many penalties they commit. And in every other program in America, when you commit penalties, whose fault is that? The head coach for discipline. That's every other program in America, by the way, but not at Alabama. No. Nick Saban is still untouchable. Uh, he's lost control of this team. He has mar full Mark Richt the, this team, and yes. now uh, it may by be the way, time to go. Locked on Bama. I, I, if you're here, I'm, I'm coming for you because, again, when I said preseason, we are the standard. Mm -hmm. It's playing out before your eyes. He said, we've rebuilt. We had a rebuilding year last year, yes. and now we, are, we put it back together. We the standard. Yeah. Uh, hey, we're going to come back after this right after we talk about Nissan. This last week had thrilling moments all over the place. Oh, did you it? pick your favorite one? Was it Lad McConkie? I'm going to pick Lad cooking? McConkie. He, he put a foot in the ground, and he just – it was like he hit reverse, mm -hmm. and then he hit forward. He had accelerated again, and uh, we're talking about ACLs everywhere. Just everywhere. people's kneecaps falling off and like – yeah. Oof. No, Lad McConkey, thrilling excitement all over the football field. And guess what? Nissan has that same thrilling excitement. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs features across, across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier, Armada, or Pathfinder today. Available now at NissanUSA.com. All right. Um, Clint's going to refresh, and I'm going to start talking about Todd Munkin. Todd Munkin is... Um, he is the greatest thing offensively to happen to the University of Georgia. This is another Kirby Smart narrative, by the way. Kirby will never hire an offensive coordinator and give him the reins because he feels like he needs to control everything. Georgia fans, do you remember that one? Do you remember when you said that? Do you remember when you said Kirby Smart, control freak, won't let go of the offense, won't, won't give up control? Well, now... Here's Todd Munkin, and he has shown over and over again, season after season now, and game after game, that he can beat you in so many ways. Clint, when when you look at this game and how mm. deep Todd Munkin was in the bag, especially in that first half, I you don't know how this Georgia team is going to come out. You don't know if we're going to come out running the ball. You don't know if we're going to come out throwing the ball. It feels like he all he has you off balance from the get go, and the the synergy between Todd Munkin and Stetson Bennett this year mm. has been a, a beautiful thing to watch. And it's a large it's in large part why I think this year's team is better than last year's team there because. It is. This offense is playing at a much higher level than last year's offense, and the defense ain't that far behind last year's defense. So uh, 
Todd Munkin, what a game on Saturday he called. Uh, you're, the two things you mentioned are exactly right. The relationship with Stetson Bennett, point one. The trust, the admiration, the abject disposal of all the plays. Okay, again, look at every other program in the nation. And and even look at Alabama with Bryce Young. Bryce Young is has the whole playbook at his disposal, and he's utilizing everything. It just turns out Bill O'Brien has no creativity whatsoever in the playbook. And he has no receivers. And he has no players, exactly. <clears throat> Setson Bennett has the talent. He has the mechanics. He has the relationship. Him and Todd are on the same page. You can see it as he comes to the line. Pre-snap reads for Stetson in these pass sets. He knows where he's going or where he has a likelihood of going based upon the defense. And Todd Munkin is setting them up. Again, it, it's like a great boxer, mm -hmm. Daniel, who keeps on jabbing and fainting and jabbing and fainting. He's setting you up for something coming down the road. And that's what yep. Todd Munkin was in his bag the entire time this game and you're right being off balance against Todd Munkin you, the only chance you have here college football coaches uh, the only chance you have against Todd Munkin is try to bring the fight to him if you're reacting and you're trying to read and go you're toast he's already two steps ahead of you you he's are already done. three plays down the road and he's got you he's got you leaning exactly where he wants you to lean because he's about to hit you right over the top or he's about to hit you right in the mouth it doesn't matter whatever the defense is going to give you he's going to take and that's that's to me is my favorite thing about Todd Munkin the biggest coachism in all of football mm -hmm. is we're going to have we're going to find a way to get the ball into the hands of our playmakers like this is every coach in the history of coaching has that's been their philosophy on offense. We got sure. these playmakers. We got to figure out a way to get the ball in their hands. We've been hearing it at Georgia for season after season after season. Well, some offensive coordinators who shall not be named previous. Don't do it. Don't do it. Georgia has had cheat codes on offense before. Yep. They've had players that were freaks, that were matchup nightmares that were unguardable at certain in certain positions at certain times in in certain utilizations but it's up to the offensive coordinator and the play caller to draw up and scheme up and then x and then call a game that gets those guys involved clint the way that darnell washington is being utilized this year might be the most supremely beautiful utilization of a player but I've Daniel, ever seen. But Daniel, yeah, he, he doesn't have 10, 12 receptions a game and one hundred and fifty with oh, two I'm tons. Sorry. I must How be think. I must be mistaken. Then I must be. I must be thinking of a different foolish. player. No, that's foolish. He plays all the snaps. Interesting. He plays the run snaps. He plays the pass snaps. He's an integral part of the run snaps and the pass snaps. That's interesting. And he is utilized for his strengths. And just like we said, when your your goal is to get a defense off balance, your goal is to get a defense guessing and not knowing what you're going to do. Well, how about one of your best pass catchers is also one of your most physically dominating blockers so that, uh, by the way, he's, he's going to go out for a pass route. But before yeah. he does, he says, oh, look, a defensive end. That's cute. I'll put my shoulder into him and make him wish he was never born. Daniel, and that's I don't, what he does. I don't follow Marvel movies that much. And if Thor has lost his hammer, I know where it's currently located. Mm. And it's in the left shoulder pad of <laughs> Darnell Washington. Like you are like that play was a touchdown. You correct. So you just said Darnell doesn't have 15 catches. He doesn't have a hundred touchdowns on the, that play was a touchdown. And Darnell Washington was a key contributor in making that play, which scored a touchdown. Daniel, if, if you noticed, we did a little Stetson and Big O when we got down near the goal line. We're hurrying that offense up. They mm -hmm. said, let's go, let's go, let's go. Big O, when they got down, he was the first guy that was saying, run the run right. You here. know what the ball you run it Follow right off behind my me. Head. 
Yeah. I will take you to the promised land. Mm-hmm. That is a man who understands. His stock draft is oh, skyrocketing. You think these NFL GMs even pay attention to that, Clint? Do you think they even watch that kind of tape? I mean, they all probably they, all just they do get is the they real... just do like a like a Desmond Howard. They just kind of go statistics and they and just lists. read the how many targets, how many completions, how many. You don't you don't think they bother to watch that, do you? Darnell about to get paid in the paid. NFL. Because this man's more physical than most tackles, and he's more agile than most backs, and he's got just as good a hands as most receivers, and he's a heck of a lot faster than a guy that's six seven two fifty should be, by any stretch of any imagination. It's generous to call it's, him two fifty, by the way. It's this is the thing about Todd Monk, and it's not just Darnell, but he's just a prime example of it. Yes. The way that he utilizes these players uh, is it it's a beautiful thing to watch, Clint. It really is, Daniel. It really is. We're going to come back after this, and Daniel apparently is going to give me some sort of props. I can't wait for this. But first, we'll let you know bet online. Bet online is your sportsbook experts. Daniel and I told you what to go do this last weekend, and uh, our cup lay, lay them running. Over, yeah, y'all. Just we said, hit that under, Mm -hmm. hit that total under, hit that Tennessee under, and lay those points. And boy, howdy, we got all them roosters coming home. They came home. They They come home. home. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bet online is the place that we go. It's the only trusted spot we do. It's the official sports book of Locked On Podcasts and Locked On Bulldogs. Right here. Get over there right now. Take your money. Make the bets that we will give out later in this week as we gear up for the SEC championship. And the first round of the playoff coming up very soon, which we will have all them lines, all them times, mm. all the way through December. Bet online, your sports book experts. All right, before we get into you, Clint, even though I know that you're desperate to talk about yourself, <laughs> let's talk about this offense real quick because we we are in a few group chats together, a few group texts together. We okay? are. The contents of said group text, not... <laughs> Not really relevant for this conversation. We ain't getting any rating on YouTube with the stuff no. that's out there. Okay. So, but in one particular, the subject comes up of, and you you brought it up, I believe. The subject comes up of this the, this, the proficiency of this offense, which, by the way, if you're unaware, um, Stetson Bennett has more passing yards than Hendon Hooker and Bryce Young. And KJ Jefferson one and of, Bo Nix. One of those guys is the surefire Heisman winner, though, Daniel. Not after last week. He's not, Clint. No, no, he's no, not. No, he just took that trophy right back. Just said, I'll be holding on to this. Thank you. It's somewhere down in the middle of that river with that goalpost. <laughs> we'll just put it down there. Um, the offense is doing fine. Oh, uh, we Jordan cooking. Rogers, we're ex- explosive plays are happening. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Everywhere. they are. They're happening. But. You know the offense is not whole, Clint. There's, there's, there's more out there. What if I was to tell you Mm -hmm. the most talented, gifted, and complete wide receiver on this entire team hasn't played in multiple weeks, Daniel? Ooh, so over a month. We we are now, and this is Georgia's third string. This is Georgia's often underutilized, or is this the this is like the cornerstone wide receiver of the offense. One of the best wide receivers to come out of Georgia in the last decade. Hmm. But he's never made any big plays in any big moments. No, has he's, he? no he's, he hasn't been absolute dominant carrying a team on his back for an entire season without the most talented wide receiver Georgia's ever seen mm-hmm. out for that entire year okay. as a freshman. No, he hasn't done that at all. Guys, when A.D. Mitchell comes back, and now Lad McConkey has remembered how to McConkey. You understand. Let's verb that, that thing up. I love that. <laughs> you understand if there's ever been a name that you could verb, it's McConkey. He just <laughs> some some like to chop the cilantro. Look, okay. He just he just chopping. He, it is he just it, it ain't he no no. He, he McConkeys that thing. No, he no, is, he is not, Mc, no he it just is chopping firm cilantro. Chop, firm chop. Mm, that's Contents of the group text, not relevant for this particular conversation. So when A.D. Mitchell comes back, though, Clint, the point is is that this Georgia offense just goes from great uh-huh. to 
What? What are we going to do? Who's going to? So you're telling me that in the playoff, Mm -hmm. Michigan's going to come to town. (laughs) And that, and they can't throw the ball to begin with. You understand? JJ McCarthy, he ain't throwing no ball. Okay. So we got Blake Corum. Who's going to be the workhorse back against this Georgia defense. And now you're telling me that the Georgia offense has got all of its weapons. Okay. We'll see. Come on to town, Michigan. We'll Come see. on to town. That's just, there's no team in college football that scares Georgia. Nope. It doesn't mean we can't lose to a team in college football. We're going to talk about not. Mississippi State. Um, you know, tomorrow on tomorrow's if you, episode, if but, you have thrown your buckets out after Tennessee week, no, go back and get your bucket. Go get, get that. Go get that bucket. You never throw the bucket out. Never. Let, let let this podcast remind you. You always need a bucket. Mississippi State going to make you reach for that bucket this week. I yes, almost guarantee it. We'll yes, talk about that more tomorrow. But Clint, I want to talk about this Georgia offense, and I want to harken back to something that you said about previous Georgia offenses. Mm. Mm. Now. They're not still the reigning World Series champions, but I do have this lovely Braves hat on yes, today, sir. and I am a big supporter of the Atlanta Braves. But the hat is not made of tinfoil exactly, but it could be said, Clint, if I may. Please do. Please do. It could be said that if you look at this Georgia offense and you look at that Tennessee game, and you mm-hmm. look at the nature of the games that we played all year leading up to this Tennessee game. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying Georgia sandbags because they don't. No, they don't. I'm not saying Georgia takes it easy on teams or has less respect for teams because they don't. But what I am telling you is that Todd Munkin's bag is deep and he does not feel the need to utilize all of its contents all the time. Kirby Smart's bag is deep. Oh, yes, sir. Glenn Schumann and Will Muschamp, they have a fairly deep Fourth bag. quarter. Fourth quarter, all of a sudden, we see blitzes. We all ain't see of a sudden, no other the, time. The, that corner cat is coming in hot, and he, and he ran it again, and he ran it again, and he ran it again. Yes, sir. So I'm not trying to go full tinfoil hat. Okay, I, I, I hear what you're doing here. But I really do believe that there is something to, when you play the way that Georgia plays, you don't have to lay all the cards out on the See, table. Clint. That's exactly right. See, Daniel, this is a little bit of a, of a, a Princess Bride type situation where you can go ahead and fight with your offhand. Sure, yeah, Wait, you can. Look, that's, that's an admirable, respectable thing to do because you know, if we need to, I will just absolutely pile drive it's why a nine minute third quarter drive Uh was exactly what kirby and todd came into because again they don't care about pageantry they don't care about the line they don't care about any committee and what they think at all they don't care about jordan rogers surely they care about jordan rogers they don't care what people call explosive. All they care about is winning. And if you're going to tell me Todd Munkin has a couple things, because you know what he did in this game? He ran the play once. You mentioned in this play that end around to Brock Bowers is a minimum six yard gainer every single time it with the possibility. It literally, you can't tackle the man doing anything. We, we ran that play one time this game, Daniel. Uh-huh. Other games, we out here running it five times a game. Yeah. Okay. This game, Todd said, I don't. I don't need to put that on a mirror film. I'm I, fine. I, wonder, I have. I wonder if there's anything off that play. I wonder if there's any. No. Hmm. No. No. Hmm. I oh. wonder if Brock Bowers might ever reach his hand out and hand it to someone running the other Uh-oh. direction. Uh-oh. <laughs> at some point. You see the bag. The bag just goes. <laughs> Let's take this play for Todd Munkin. You fake that, and then all of a sudden Brock is out there in the flat. And what does he do when he gets out to the flat? And he didn't catch the. He didn't get the handoff, Daniel. He just goes ahead and turns upfield and he goes down the sideline for a wheel route. And, you, and now linebacker says, "Oh, oh, that's my assignment." 
No, he done. He gone. He gone. Brock flips to Lad coming back on the other run. He, Brock takes that fake and the defense goes with him and then off tackle the other way in which Mims or Broderick and Tate Ratledge are just pile driving people down the field. And all of a sudden you got yourself a 25. Do you see the tree that Todd Munkin can produce with yeah. just that one play? And we're talking about 33 sets, not just one set. Now all of a sudden the expansiveness of his creativity is out of bounds. Kirby Smart is um, – he's playing a lot of chess out here while mm. other coaches are playing checkers. And uh, credit where credit's due. The tinfoil hat hasn't been appropriate in years past, but I do I do think there's something to it. And I'll give you the best example of it. And, it, and it's just sort of a – I mean, you call it a slip of the tongue. You can call it whatever you want. But Kirby Smart said mm – -hmm. he said – We've been preparing for this game for the last two weeks. Uh oh. Now hold now. Hmm. Uh oh. Oh oh. So you're telling me that the we had a they bye had, week and then we played Florida. No, no, Daniel. It was it was Florida then bye week clearly because Kirby was practicing two weeks for. Oh no, that's not the order of events. How much of that bye week do you think was spent looking at Florida? How much of that bye week do you think you were spent looking at Tennessee? How many is to that Florida week do you think we're spent looking at Florida? How much of that? And then we came out there and did what to Florida? Also that we could see, that's what I'm talking about. It's not sandbagging. No, it's not. But Kirby knows the games that because you don't think that Kirby has members of his staff who are just grinding tape of Ohio State and Michigan. I was, I was just going to use TCU. an example. TCU. We have somebody who is breaking down TCU film right now. If the NCAA came out and said, we changed the rules, you have to play Ohio State for the national championship tomorrow, Kirby would be like, great, put the game plan in. Tell the kids, we, we you ready? we're ready. He's ready. It's look, y'all. Last, we're gonna come back and talk about this tomorrow because I'm because I'm here to tell you when you see this team and their tackling and their assignment in the back end, the, the assignment and the tackling that Daniel and I got on this podcast and said was the worst, and we were scared about the defensive back. And it turns out the defensive backfield, the defensive line showed out in a way that absolutely, but Daniel, the defensive backs may have played better. The tackling that was, in the secondary was the best thing that any Georgia player did in this game, period. Again, that comes back to coaching, and we have the best one in America, Correct. and all y'all don't have him. And you would take him right now if right you Right now. This has been Locked on Bulldogs, your team every day. Come back tomorrow. We will talk more Georgia Bulldogs. We will see you guys then. See ya.